<sighs> eating too much is my weakness. I'm fat. I can't help it. I just keep eating and eating until my chin takes over the whole world. And that kind of aspiration is too rare. I've been looking at politics and I've given money to Bernie Sanders. My hope was that he'd run for president, but he was too weak to do that. Uh, and it's a general problem for liberals, this profound weakness. Now I live with a lot of people. Um, it's a surprise to some strangers that I live with African Americans peacefully, imagine that. Um, but one of those people is truly the weakest human I've ever met. And this person manages to, forgive me, I'm trying to plug in my device. Um, this person will say things like, I don't do nothing wrong. Or like, hey, hey, I'm not mean. I don't lie. And he'll keep doing this kind of thing. And it's not that I think he does anything wrong or that he lies. It's that his ego is so fragile that he disgusts me, that it's pathetic. And that's what the Democratic Party is, is that they're so weak in the face of their gigantic advantages, their embarrassment of ridges, riches, not ridges, riches. They have so many opportunities. They could dominate Republicans if they wanted to, but they don't because they're weak. Now, are they paid to be weak or are they just naturally weak? I think it's natural. I don't think they are corrupt. All of them are. But the Democrats aren't as corrupt as the Republicans and are the easy choice. Nobody should doubt that. If, if the Democrats could provide somebody that wasn't senile, demented, worthless, old... I mean, Biden is a... He was a segregationist. What a piece of shit he was. And so I was thinking also about my own politics and the N-word. And again, what an embarrassment how weak niggerphobia is. Now, I don't mean to offend you, but niggerphobia is hatred of the word, the N-word, the actual word, not the black human beings that it once referred to or the darker skinned human beings that it was referred to as colonial times. No, the phobia is about the word because that's the best we can do. How profoundly weak after what black people have gone through in the United States, after what minorities have gone through in the world with, uh, with just Britain and then America just dominating and, and just taking it all. All that happens, and what do you get? You get one word? I coin a word a day. That's nothing. That's pure weakness. Are you saying that your best anti-racist argument? And then beyond that, we're willing to talk about it, just not say the word. And so if you say the word, well, I, I don't feel comfortable talking to you about it, but I, I can't help it sometimes. It's just pure weakness. It's nothing. Now, I never was a fan of sports. I never lifted weights. I've started to recently start to build up my muscles. But I look at somebody like Joe Rogan and he's on another planet. He's, nobody's gonna call him weak, not politically and not physically. And so I have a certain amount of respect for that because when I grew up, I lived in a, a science laboratory town. I lived in Los Alamos, the place where the atom bomb was invented, the Manhattan Project. And so jokes were like, what happens when a neutron walks into a bar? Uh, the bartender says, hey, for you, no charge. Everything's free because ah, there is no electrical charge for the neutron, unlike the proton and the electron. Hilarious. So that kind of focus on the intellect left me uninterested in strength because truth is strong. Simple truth is overwhelming. And the harmlessness of saying the N-word is simply true. If you are in a room alone, I don't care about your color or your class, 
and you say the N-word, did God get offended? Did God come down and say, look, you're a racist. <laughs> I'm going to have to give you a kidney stone. No, nobody got offended. Nobody knew. You just sat in the room alone. It doesn't matter if you say a fucking word. And I say the N-word and I say the F-word, obviously. But I'm not as weak anymore. I'm past that intellectual stage where I just think, oh, I don't need to make any, take, make any scars and the truth will win out. I've seen the truth fail and lose out time and time again when it has no right place in losing. And one of those places is casinos. Look at this gigantic success built upon our hugest weakness, which is our, our folly and our pride and our willingness to just look at, at little flashing lights. Casinos are offensive. Why? Because humanity is weak. Because we used to do things like hunt mammoths and, and kill all the bison. We used to kill things. Now we have, we've outsourced that and we've made it so that the people that do have to kill things just kill hundreds of cows or chickens and they don't have to do anything but kill all day long. And so it doesn't take the kind of strength that communal strength and communal hunting involves. As a community, when we hunt, we value strength. And we hunt to kill and to eat because teeth are a weapon, because humanity is somewhat violent, regardless of even if you are violent against plants only, they're still organisms. When you eat them, you are committing great acts of violence. And so what if you are protecting the feelings of fellow sentient beings by doing so? Veganism also has an embarrassment of riches behind it, and yet the argument for it has been profoundly weak, and there's been very little in-your-face kind of activity that just shows you how gross milk pus is, and how cheese is just absolutely deplorably gross. It's like moldy milk, moldy pus from a cow's nipple. It's gross. But everybody drinks it because weakness. So it sucks that, and so what? That's the end of my story. Fuck weakness, man. I, I can't stand it anymore. I don't know how to fix it because it's not just me. It's all of us.